Hello everyone, this is Tony from Ping Cap Education. As recording voice takes too much time, I am using artificial intelligence to greet you. Thank you for your understanding. Today, I will show you TyDB's capability of adding indexes online. We will also compare TyDB's with MySQL, in terms of adding index. Let's now look at this diagram. In today's quick demo, there will always be four terminals. Terminal 1, Terminal 2, Terminal 3, and Terminal 4. In the first demo case, Terminal 1 will issue a long transaction. Terminal 2 will issue an adding index command. Terminal 3 and 4 will insert to the table, and query the table, respectively. In this demo, TyDB's metadata lock is disabled. Discussion about the metadata lock is beyond the scope of this quick demo. If you are interested, I am more than happy to have a further chat with you. What I would like to show you next is that, when the metadata lock is disabled, transactions in Terminal 2, 3, and 4 can finish without any drama. So, here we are at the terminal. In Terminal 1, let's first disable the TyDB's metadata lock. By default, it is open from version 6.5. Let's now do some preparation for this demo in Terminal 1. This includes creating a database, creating a table, and inserting some values into the table. Let's now start a long transaction. Let's insert a value. That's it. I will keep this transaction open. In the second terminal, let's add an index to this table. As you can see, the request to add an index can finish. In terminal 3, let's insert a value into the table, which can also be finished very soon. In terminal 4, let's query the table. All done. The transaction in terminal 2, 3, and 4, and finish within no time. We can now go back to the Terminal 1, let's commit this transaction. As you can see now, the transaction encountered an error with code 8028. This is because the schema is different from the one when this transaction started. Actually, an experienced developer can handle this easily. Let's look at the second figure. When the transactions in Terminal 1 are short transactions, we can simply retry it again. Let's look at this demo. This time, in Terminal 1, there is a Java program with straightforward retry logic. Let's start the program. Let's now issue a DDL request in terminal number 2. As you can see, in terminal 1, although there is an 8028 error, simply retry can solve this problem. Application developers may have more sophisticated ways to handle this. As we are expecting, the DML in terminal 3 and 4 can also finish in real time. Let's now move on to the next demo. In some situations, it is possible that the long transaction in Terminal 1 is doing some important tasks, such as batch processing. You would like to give the transaction in the Terminal 1 higher priority, meaning you don't prefer a retry. It is actually also achievable in TyDB. You can simply enable the metadata lock. Now, here is our terminal again. Let's first check the metadata lock, and enable it. We are now doing some preparations. Then, let's start the transaction. In Terminal 2, let's issue a request to add an index. As you can see, it is blocked. However, the transaction in Terminal 3 and 4, can pass easily. Let's now go back to the Terminal 1, and commit the transaction. Once the transaction in Terminal 1 is committed, the adding index request in Terminal 2 will also be finished very soon. Lastly, let's look at what would happen in MySQL. Unfortunately, MySQL cannot handle this kind of situation very well. As long as the first transaction does not commit, the adding index request, as well as all the following DML requests will be blocked. If there are a huge number of client requests, the thread pool may be exhausted.
Let's look at the demo. In Terminal 1, let's do some preparation, and then issue a long transaction. In Terminal 2, let's issue an adding index request. As you can see, it is blocked now. Let's move to Terminals 3 and 4. As you can see, the insert and even select query cannot go through. If there are a huge number of requests, it will be a disaster. In this video, we show you how TIDB is able to deal with adding index requests. TIDB provide various options to deal with different requirement, while MySQL does not. TIDB allows transactions to perform on both the current schema version, and the previous schema version, while MySQL needs to take a full instance blocking lock, meaning no transactions can cross the schema versions. I have uploaded all scripts, programs, cloud formation template, and demonstration workflow guide to the GitHub. In this repository, I have implemented the demo on AWS. Welcome to contribute other demonstration, or the same demo on different cloud vendors. You might also be interested in TIDB's workshop for MySQL users. This workshop introduces TIDB's specific features with many hands-on exercises. It is very friendly to those who are familiar with MySQL. If there are any fundamental concepts, which are not very clear to you, such as, the difference between TIDB and TIDB server, TIKV, SQL layer, storage layer, stateless and stateful, etc. You might consider going to the Ping Cap training and certification site. Enroll, and learn the free self-paced introduction to TIDB course first. Thank you so much. See you in the next demo.